But today I want to do a video on my top essential add-ons for War Within. I'm going to be covering all the add-ons that I wouldn't want to play the game without. Now I'm going to dive right in with the first, the four most essential add-ons of all. These are the add-ons I deem absolutely essential for all users, period, regardless of how you play, because they're just that important. And the first add-on is Taintless. What does Taintless do? This basically fixes bugs. You install this, and you have less problems with the game. That's why it's the number one essential add-on to start with. All, like, if you've ever gotten an issue where you push a button that says, Action blocked, you can't do that. Reload your UI. This fixes a lot of those. So, you know exactly what I'm talking about how annoying those are when you literally have to reload your UI because you can't use your action bar. Installing this reduces the chance of that happening significantly. That's number one. Number two is Bug Sack and Bug Grabber. Now, what are those? I've talked about them in previous videos. This is an add on that automatically collects errors for you so that they're not intrusive. If something is broken in the game, you do want to know about it, but you don't want it to be annoying when the game's telling you about it. This collects errors for you, but does so in a non intrusive way. So you can look at the air later and say, I'm in the middle of the fight when it's popping up on your screen and keeping you from being able to do the fight. You don't want errors then. You want to look at it later to figure out why something's broken. This is the add on that does that. The next big one is Bad Boy. If you've ever been on a high pop realm and sat in, in town, you've seen trade chat, it's full of bots. This doesn't do a very good job removing them. They're everywhere. They're spamming gold making sites, etc., etc. This add on filters that crap out of the chat for you. So it's just, a, it's just a must have, period. And it's got additional plugins too, to where you could add custom words as well. Bad boy, C cleaner, crap cleaner. So yeah, you, you do that and you could add in more custom keywords to get rid of crap from chat. That covers the four most essential add ons. Now you say, that was three. Well, Bug Sack and Bug Grabber are two add-on combo. Anyways, the next add-ons I'm going to talk about are utility add-ons that I consider essential because they just improve the overall experience of the game. Number one is item quality icons. How many of you go in the game and you're confused by this hero track, champion track, etc., etc., and you're like, just translate it to English. That's what this does. It, but it puts quality icons on the items and shows the item level range, etc. Now there are weak cards that do this too, but I personally prefer the add-on approach because that way it's uh, easier to update. But this just makes it easier to understand what items mean. The next essential add-on is pretty simply called High Talking Head. Now what is High Talking Head? Whenever there's an NPC talking to you in a dungeon, or out in the world when you get a world quest, you get the knowing pop up down here with a talking head and the words going across your screen. This add on basically kills that feature, but without removing the dialogue. Instead, it appears in your chat frame and you still hear the audio. So you don't miss out on the lore. You just get rid of the annoying pop up, especially when you're in a dungeon. You know, the add on was created because of Mr. Turner's sight, which, by the way, is coming back. So. That's a good add-on to have. High talking head. The next utility add-on that I really think is essential is this bar up here. It's Bazooka. But there are other add-ons like it too that might still work. Like Titan Bar, I'm not sure if it works or not, but I know Bazooka still works. It adds a utility bar up here to where you can install additional plugins like, called Brokers and get useful information. Like I've got a gold broker that gives me a gold summary of all the characters on this account. This is Silver Dragon, and it shows all the rares I've seen recently. Here are all my online guildies. I can see who's online and what they're doing at an easy glance. I don't have to open the guild roster and scroll through the user list and click on names just to see where they're at. It's that simple. I'm going to skip the friends list. Here's my equipment durability right at a glance, right in the broker menu. And there's many more plugins. I'm very lightweight, so I don't have a lot of things. I got my performance plug in here. I can see my latency. 
my FPS, my add-on memory, my mouse over, I get more detailed information on my add-on memory. That's an add-on author in me, you know, technical information. This is Bazooka, but it's called a broker add-on, so you can look at alter alternatives to it as well. And then you can look for data brokers to find plugins you want to use for it. The next utility add-on I want to talk about is shared media. Shared media is an add-on that basically acts as a library for all other add-ons to register sounds, fonts, textures into a shared space to where now, let's say you install WeCars and you install DBM. Well, all the sounds that WeCars added to the game are now available in DBM and all the sounds DBM added to the game are now available in WeCars because of shared media. It basically goes, okay, let's take all the sounds and combine them into one shared space. Now, some add-ons bundle this with them by default, so you may already have this without installing it manually. So if you have sounds available from all add-ons, you probably already have shared media installed because it's so useful that some add-ons actually bundle it. But I still prefer to install the standalone because that way, let's say, WeCars bundles it. Now, I don't know if they do or not. But let's say they do. But WeCars hasn't been updated for the patch yet, but shared media has been. Since you have it installed separately, you get it working quicker because you update it as a standalone add on. Now, in all likelihood, WeCars will probably be the first one updated of those two, but that was just an example I gave. Okay, now the next category. This is a big one Rating and Mythic Plus. These are the essential add-ons for that category. Number one, boss mod of choice. Whether it's DBM or Bigwigs, you should have one or the other. Period. If you're doing any high-end rating or Mythic Plus, you should have one or the other. In addition, you should also have the dungeon mod pack for them as well. So for a DBM, that's DBM dungeons, events, and delves. For Bigwigs, you'd want to use Little Wigs for dungeons and delves. Because end game content isn't just raids anymore so you want to have you know the dungeon and delve pack as well regardless of which boss mod you're using you should just have it on the high end next add i want to talk about is mythic plus timer that i like particularly like which is this one this add-on replaces the mythic plus timer it's on the right side of your screen in a mythic plus with one that's far more detailed like showing the trash count automatically number of bosses killed, and additional details, like the affixes right up here. This add-on is very nice. And again, I know there's a weak aura version of this too. I prefer the add-on approach because again, it's uh, easier to update and it's not reliant on uh, another add-on to exist. Like you're gonna find that I kind of lean away from using weak auras that are replicating functions of add-ons. I tend to use weak auras in more niche cases because I'd rather have a, a lighter weight add-on doing it. And I'll get into lightweight and why that's important at the end of this video. But since I already brought up the topic, weak auras. For rating and mythic, you should actually have the weak auras add-on, but you don't want to overload it with memory or too many weak auras that are obsolete. You definitely want to house clean that from time to time. You want to manage it well, is all I'm saying. Weak auras is a powerful add-on, but it's very easily mismanaged, and it's very important not to do that. And again, I'll talk about that at the end of the video. And then the last add-on for Rating and Mythic Plus is a strong nameplate add-on. Now, the Blizzard nameplates have come a long way. They're almost, they're almost usable on their own. In fact, with uh, mods like DBM able to add cooldowns to even base nameplates, they're damn near usable, but they're not usable enough. I still say they haven't gone far enough yet, especially with regard to uh, cast bars and being able to customize them, or more importantly, anti-spam. That's where nameplates like Kui nameplates and Plater come in. If you're in a Mythic Plus, and they got that new affix that spawns a bunch of balls on your screen. Or even in the past, when affixes like uh, those annoying fixating ghosts were chasing you around, 
you would need to use a nameplate add-on to, you know, shrink or even hide those nameplates so you can see the ones that matter, so you can see the cast bars that matter. You know, add-ons like Plater especially are super strong because you can share profiles easily from experts like Quasi who already have Mythic Plus profiles ready to go for you that will emphasize good cast bars from unimportant ones. You know, the critical ones that have to be interrupted or you die. And then, uh, eh, we should hide that one. You know, a profile like that is a very powerful utility. And that's why you should have a player or, or, or a nameplate add on like Plater in Mythic Plus and Rating. So the next category outdoor and navigation. These are big because outdoor content is a big part of WoW, such as world quests or hunting rare spawns. The first add on I want to talk about is World Quest Tracker. I'm going to click on Dragon Isles, and World Quest Tracker replaces all of Blizzard's icons with good ones that actually show what the quest is or the reward is. And on here, you can get a summary, but that might feel spammy. It's like, ew, I don't want that. Well, you don't have to actually have that much on there. You have to configure it to be more towards your need. Like maybe you just don't want to show the summary. Now it's gone. Now you can just look at the quest icons at a glance like this. But one of the real big things I like about this is let's say I only wanted to get gold. There. In an instant, all the gold quests that get gold are all I was showing. It even shows me a total down here. If I do all these gold quests, I'll make 13k gold. That's a lot of damn gold. And now that I've filtered it and shown it in a clear and concise way, it's easy to just fly around and pop, pop, pop and get them all. Or if it's an important currency, like something for player power, you could, you know, maybe artifact power, which isn't relevant this expansion, but you know, that's just an example of something you want to do that's important for your end game. And that's World Quest Tracker. That's a very good add-on to make world navigation. That's not the only good add-on. Next most important one is Handy Notes. You want to know where stuff is. Where rare spawns spawn, such as this one. Because you need to learn to... Uh, maybe you're looking for gear that drops or some cosmetics. Or maybe you're just bad directions like me and get lost in town all the time. And can't remember, where's the blacksmith? Where's the engineering trainer? Handy notes. Here's the innkeeper. Here's the engineering trainer. Here's the blacksmithing trainer. Here's the portal. Here's the portal to Emerald Dream. And you're like me and you keep forgetting where the Uldum portal is. Oh, there it is. Handy notes is a huge add on when it comes to marking the map, but things Blizzard doesn't put on the map because. Blizzard has come a long way. They added a lot of new stuff to the map in the War Within. But this is a fraction of the stuff you need to know. But as you can see, War Within is out. We're on the pre-patch. Blizzard, where are the portal icons? You don't have any. Handy Notes. That's an outdoor navigation mod you should have. And with Handy Notes, you need plugins. Now I'm going to talk about plugins real quickly. Like, at least core essentials. Whatever the current expansion is, so... Let's see, Dragonflight, Dragonflight. Yeah, hang out Dragonflight. You want to have Dragonflight if Dragonflight's current. There's already a War Within plugin that started. And this plugin is like a cities plugin that shows where the stuff is in cities. So you look for plugins that are relevant to what you're doing. Here's an Oribos city plugin, which is disabled because I'm not in Oribos. No. Again, I'm obsessive about uh, disabling what I don't need until I need it, because it matters. And again, I'll talk about that at the end of the video. And the last world navigation plugin I'm going to talk about is Silver Dragon, which I talked about briefly. This add-on is a rare scanner, but it's probably the best one of all. Like people actually often use NPC scan or rare scanner, but this one has way more features, and yet it's still lightweight. And some of the book good features of this mod is the ability to sync with other users. So you can sync scene times, the guild, 
or other party members. It has good history, good broker integration. It shows rewards. And it even integrates with handy notes automatically. So this can actually add handy notes to the world map for you. It's also got an advanced feature called the range extender. So they do some hacky stuff to make you be able to detect rares from further away than any other add-on can. I don't know how they do it, but it's, it's amazing. But this rare, this thing can detect rares from right across the zone. I'm being attacked by a cat. She, she thinks she's an add-on and has to be in this video. Come here, you. Come here, you. You don't belong here. You can stay on my lap. Okay, lay down. Anyways, the cat add-on is also essential. This gives you a plus five to happiness while you're playing games. At least until she gets on the keyboard, and it's a minus five to happiness. Next category. Leveling, questing, and gearing. You know, basically, it's the start of the expansion. What add-ons do you want for that? I'm going to re-mention two right off the bat. Silver Dragon and Handy Notes. Navigation and Killing Rares, because rares give a lot of experience, and they might get, drop a piece of gear or even a cosmetic or mount that you didn't know about. And Handy Notes will just help you find your way around. But the next add-on that goes in this category specifically for gearing is Pawn. When you're, up, when you're leveling, you're getting, you're, play, you're getting gear constantly. You're placing gear constantly. But you're not always going to be sitting there looking at the gear and going, well, is it an upgrade or not? You know, I don't know if it's an upgrade. I can't really give you a good example because maybe I can. I can put this ring on on purpose. And then Pawn will show me that ring is an upgrade. You should be wearing this one instead. In fact, it's a massive upgrade because, you know, this heirloom ring is like really low level. Definitely be using that ring over this one. But that's what Pawn does. And you can configure it or you can import stats off the internet. But it's not just leveling, it's also end game too. It's like this lets you compare stats of gear in game very easily using stats weights established by the community. So it's very accurate. And even if you don't like the stat weights by the community, maybe you still have your own stat weights. Despite the fact that the community might say this, you could be like, well, I prefer this anyway. Just change it in the add on and it will give you your stat weights. That's what Pawn does, and that's why it's an essential add-on for gearing. The next category I want to talk about is crafting and markets. Again, the start of the new expansion. So where's all the gold making going to be at the start of the expansion? Crafting and auction house. So when it comes to that, if you want to make any gold at all, this is the best time to do it, and the add-ons you want for that or auctionator for auction house. I prefer this over auctioneer because again, it's much more lightweight and much more performant. And then the next add-on you want, if you're a gatherer, you're going to want gathermate and routes. Gathermate shows stuff like ore and herbs on the map, and routes lets you like automatically generate a route that you can fly around to collect those nodes. And then the final add-on for crafting and market is one called Craft Sim. This basically adds a bunch of amazing features, the actual work orders UI, and stuff that helps you assess profits or make sure you avoid crafting something that'll actually be a loss to you. Like all those spammy damn work orders that are in there all the time. Craft Sim makes crafting a lot easier. It's a, it's a bit uh, heavy-handed add-ons. It's one of those add-ons I don't enable unless I'm actually crafting. In fact, none of those add-ons from crafting, auctionator, auctionator, craft sim, gather mate, or routes are enabled right now because right now I'm not doing crafting and marking. And the last category of essentials is if you play this game as a collector. Let's say this game isn't about end game for you. Maybe you're not worried about Mythic Plus or rating. Maybe the end game to you is collecting transmog or mounts or pets. And these are the add ons are for you. The essential add ons there are all the things, which is the most common add on because it 
literally tracks all the things. What you have, what you don't have, where it is. But it's also the most heavyweight add-on in World of Warcraft, period. This is an add-on you don't want enabled at any time that you're doing anything essential like raiding or Mythic Plus or heck, even Dragon Racing. And I'll explain that, like I said, at the end of the video. But when you're doing collections, that's the add-on for you. The next collection add-on I really like is Paragon Reputation. And that actually is enabled right now. What does that do? It makes the rep bars in here that are Paragon are basically rep past Exalted. Easier to see. Moreover, you mouse over them, and it will automatically show what the rewards are for that Paragon rep and whether you have them or not. Now, it's a little bit different with uh, the current expansion in Dragonflight because Renown has kind of replaced it, but it's still a useful add-on regardless because it still improves the UI, even if they've shipped it away from Paragon Rewards at the moment. They might make a return. As a collector, you're probably going to spend a lot of time doing old content because there's years worth of it, and this add-on goes back years. Oh, you're done on my lap? Okay, bye. Minus five to happiness. But that's Paragon Reputation add-on. And that about covers all the essential add-ons that I want to talk about. I'm going to talk about a few non-essential add-ons just as a bonus at the end. But I categorize these differently because these are add-ons that you don't necessarily need. They're just kind of nice to have. Everything I said before were like necessities for the certain things I was talking about, the categories like collections or leveling or rating. But these are just a bunch of miscellaneous add-ons of any category that I'm just going to cover real briefly. And that's Mapster. So I can move the map around, change the size, change the transparency, and it's just all around improves the map. But it's not required, it's just nice to have. Next thing is I'm very boomer. I prefer classic quest log. So I prefer this to be a different frame than this. I don't like that whole hybrid frame. Like, Mapster still allows the hybrid frame, but like, I don't like this quest log. It's so bloated compared to this. So that's just a preference thing, but it's noteworthy mention. Next one is damage meters. Some people will tell you this is an essential add-on, and for certain people it is. Like the raid leader, I would say it's an essential add-on for any officer that's assessing the performance in the raid. Or if you're trying to assess your own performance, I'd say it's very useful too. But it's very much a subjective opinion because for other players, it's a distraction. People actually perform worse with damage meters sometimes because they're looking at this down here and not what's in front of them up here. And that's why I say it's categorized and noteworthy and not essential. But when it comes to damage meters, I prefer lightweight. I actually go with Skada. Skada technically isn't updated for the War Within yet, but it's not broken. It just it works. It throws a couple errors. I have an add-on author. I actually patched the errors, so mine actually doesn't throw errors. I fixed it. But I still prefer Skada because some of the add-ons like details just it's way overkill for my needs, but again, if you're a raid leader, details is actually the one you should have because you want to have all the information. And I'm more interested in like a little bit of an information. So that's why I got Scala versus detail. Next noteworthy mention is unit frames. As you can see, I'm using shutout unit frames. You can't see my raid frames, but you can see my you know target and player frame. I'm using shadowed because I still prefer that style over the Blizzard built-in frames. But I rate this again as noteworthy and not essential because the Blizzard frames have come a long way. They're actually in a state now where they actually are very much usable, especially if you're not a healer. Now, if you're a healer, you probably need more niche frames and more advanced features. And then unit frames might come out of the noteworthy into the essential category. But since I'm not a healer main, I can't give you the best advice on that. So I'm not really going to you which one you should be using try them out and figure out what you should be using on your own the next optional noteworthy add-on i'm going to talk about 
is add-ons like method rate tools or ORA3. I use ORA3, which is, again, it's lighter weight than method rate tools because I don't need as much. I'm not a raid leader. You know, I'm, I want to track like some basic things like healer cooldowns or uh, I do have a personal consumable check that announces to the group because that's nice. And like the res timer monitor and just some basic stuff. This also has checks built in for if you're in a raid. You can check the durability or the equipped eye level of your raid and look for anyone who hasn't repaired. Maybe someone has a fishing rod on. Well, that's not really a thing anymore, but you know, maybe they have a Stormwind cloak on. That's, that can still happen. So this add-on is pretty good for that. But if you're the raid leader or need something more advanced that has like notes features too, then you're probably going to lean more towards method raid tools. Now the end of the video, I kept talking about why lightweight versus heavyweight add-ons matter. And I chose this zone specifically because it's not a very demanding zone. But as you can see, right now, I'm not running a lot of add-ons. And I'm running around. And the game is pretty smooth, locked at like 60 FPS. There's no real dips or anything. And I'm going to emphasize about this. This is not a fault. What I'm about to, what I'm about to show you has nothing to do with the add-ons doing something wrong. Or even that they're wasting CPU. It's actually about a core mechanic of the game of what Blizzard's doing. Every 10 seconds, Blizzard runs a function called garbage collect to where it scans add-on memory and then reclaims memory that's no longer in use by the add-on. So basically, it takes out the trash because add-ons use a lot of temporary storage, especially add-ons that use a lot of table or high memory add-ons. As you can see, I'm walking around. It's pretty smooth because I'm not running a lot of high memory add-ons. We're running a straight line when it's not moving the camera, as you can see, you know. It's smooth, no hitching, anything. It's just running good. Let me show you what happens if you're running a lot of high memory add-ons. All the things. Auctionator. And well, let's turn on Raider IO too. All right. Okay, now my ad memory is 525 megabytes. I'll turn on my FPS again. I'm again, I'm going to run in a straight line. You're going to notice that every 10 seconds, the game actually hitches. Micro freezes. My frames will drop when it happens. It'll be approximately every 10 seconds. There it is. It just dropped to 54 frames for a brief second, and the whole game hitched. It will happen exactly every 10 seconds. Every single time. Blizzard runs garbage collect because my add-on memory is so high, it's going to cause a performance hitch. And these micro hitches, see, there's another one it just hitched. They could be the difference between a wipe and a kill if it causes you to make a mistake in a raid because your whole game literally froze for half a second. That's, how, that's what's happening. The game is literally freezing because my add-on memory is so high. And it's not that they're using CPU. I can turn on the CPU profiler. Almost none of these add-ons are burning CPU. In fact, the add-ons themselves aren't even causing the hitch. It's entirely Blizzard causing this problem. But they have to. Because they don't, if they don't run that garbage collect, then you have a memory leak. These add-ons are constantly filling up table memory with garbage. And if you don't, if you don't call it in every 10 seconds, that hitch was pretty bad. But this is why I say heavy add-ons, like all the things, and uh, Auctionator, they are fantastic add-ons. Don't have them running when you're doing a Mythic Plus or a Raid. You might not even realize it, but that's causing performance issues because it's not completely visible. The frames don't even drop that much. Like every, every time the hitch happens, it goes from 60 to 54. It looks like a six frame drop. But the thing is, because the game is actually hitching, 
not even this is completely accurate. These micro stutters are awful gameplay experience. And it, and it can get even worse than this. There are people out there that run hundreds of add-ons. And I wonder why their game runs like crap. This is an important thing that I need to demonstrate in this video. And why I run certain add-ons, like details. That add-on uses about 20 or 30 megabytes of memory easily. Scott uses about two. That's why I run SCADA. Details is an amazing add-on. And it's not Details' fault that using high add-on memory causes these hitches. It's just the nature of garbage collect. But that's why I always lean towards add-ons, use less memory. You know, SCADA versus Details, ORA versus uh, Method Ray Tools. Yeah, you get the point. I'm wandering around and it's hitching every 10 seconds. It's sort of like clockwork. If I first stop watching my screen, every time you hit 10, counting to 10, hitch, hitch. And it's just, well, it's awful. And now that you're informed and educated on this, now you can understand what's happening. And if you're doing something as precise as dragon racing, for example, the last thing you want to do have your client hitching when you're trying to make a sharp turn to avoid a branch or you're in a mythic plus and you do a key interrupt and you press your key and the inputs missed because the client was frozen for half a second while you're pushing that key down you know these are things that literally break the game with hitching so that's why i actually turn most of this stuff off unless i need it I actually wish I had a feature where I can set, have profiles here. I would love to have a profile that's like rating, crafting. That would be a lovely feature, Blizzard. Because then we can even switch to the add-ons we need for what we're doing at the moment. That's the final thought I want to put in on performance. And another point I wanted to make about that, that's also why I avoid all-in-one add-ons. Because again, I like to be able to turn off specific features at specific times. LVI is a great add-on. The problem is, as an all-in-one, it's all or nothing most of the time. And I prefer to have each individual component as a toggle I can turn on and off. So I can, ironically, micromanage these micro hitches. You know, I'd like to just run a nice, clean ship as much as possible. Which one has... Turn off all the things. I turn off auctionator. Okay, I actually should do it. Let's bring my add-on memory back down to a yeah, about ninety. And my testing personally, the target your target memory usage you want to be is actually under a hundred. Because believe it or not, like if I actually measured it, you get hitches even at this. They're just so much. The more add-on memory you have, the harder the hitch. And I found it at the, at the point is when it becomes noticeable, at least to me, somewhere around 120 or 130 add-on memory. That's again why I have this broker up here. You can see the add-on memory. If you don't have a broker, you can see the add-on memory by going down here and mousing over this. And that's another reason why I talked about weak ROs. Weak ROs is using 20 megabytes of memory. Look how many weak ROs I have. I have four. Imagine if you have 100 weak ROs. More hitching. That's why I say, if you're one of those people who are collecting weak ROs and you still got Legion raids, get it the hell out of there. Clean it up. Run what you need and only what you need because the game performance counts on it. Anyways, I hope you found this video very informative and I only educated you on some of my favorite add-ons and what I consider essential, but also the add and experience as a whole in optimizing your game performance so that you're running smoothly. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.